When I'm raising golden white cloud mountain minnow fry, their first food is infusoria because the little buggers are so unbelievably tiny. My aim is to get them on nutritious baby brine shrimp as soon as possible, but until they grow large enough to ingest baby brine, I usually introduce an intermediate food, microworms. There's no shortage of videos on how to raise microworms, and WikiHow has a very clear and specific entry on the subject. My video won't fill any gaps in the knowledge out there, but I enjoy talking about my experiences in fish keeping, and there's always value in getting someone's first-hand perspective, right? Panagrellus redivivus is the most commonly found microworm. They're actually a type of nematode, very small, just visible to the naked eye. They feed on microscopic yeast that grows on carbohydrates, so they're typically cultured with oatmeal, mashed potatoes, bread, or cornmeal. I began with oatmeal because it came with the starter culture I ordered online, but I soon switched to bread because I found it quicker and easier. I start with a two cup Ziploc container. You can use anything that will allow you to wipe worms off the sides, so not too deep and round is probably easier than square. I take some ooze from an existing culture and spread it evenly over the bottom of the container. You don't need a lot. WikiHow suggests a teaspoon, but more worms get it going faster. Then I take a piece of white bread and just soak it with dechlorinated water, only as much as the bread can hold without dripping, and lay that over the ooze. Then I take some active dry yeast and sprinkle it evenly over the bread. Just lightly, the amount doesn't have to be precise. That's it. I cover the container loosely, it needs to breathe, and wait a few days. Room temperature is fine, Warmer temperatures speed up the process, but then the culture won't last as long. Cooler temperatures slow things down, but microworms can survive anything above freezing. As the population matures, you'll see a shimmering effect when light glares off the surface of the culture. Then worms begin crawling up the sides of the container. When they reach a height where they can be easily scraped off without touching the base mixture, the microworms can be harvested and fed to your fish. Some people just use their index finger. I use a small pastry brush with dampened bristles. While microworms survive for hours in water, they don't stay suspended in the water column. They sink quickly. If there's gravel in the tank, most fish will find them impossible to reach. I feed microworms in a corner with a bare bottom. According to WikiHow, a culture of microworms can last two to four weeks. Two weeks sounds about right in my experience. I keep three cultures going at all times and start a new one roughly every week. As yeast break down the carbohydrates, the base mixture will develop a strong fermented smell and become soupy in texture. Since microworms don't burrow down into the mixture but stay on the surface, it helps to stir the mixture weakly to bring up unused nutrients and extend the life of the culture.